Hey, Magnus here, and today we're talking about the EOS R from a video perspective, and is it worth the upgrade if you've got a 5D Mark IV? Check it out. Behind you with like the clouds, the sky, and everything, and still be able to see. And we've got the Rode Video Mic. Here we go. M50. What do you guys think? All right, so basically EOS R was just announced. It's Canon's first full frame mirrorless camera. Now that's exciting news. They announced four new awesome lenses with it and basically the capabilities on it sound pretty exciting. Now I gotta be totally honest with you guys. First, when I was hearing that Canon and Nikon, they were going to announce new mirrorless full frame bodies. I wanted to see what they could bring to the table and of course not overdo it because on your first go you don't want to overdo it, you want to play it safe. So I wasn't that excited about the Canon. But then I started to see that the spec sheet was released early and it got me kind of excited. It still had me uh, question a lot of things that were going to be in the camera but it's still, I still was excited like what are we going to get out of it? There's 4K in this camera. There's, it's got a flip screen. I want to see what more it could do. But I, I got to be honest, at first I'm like, the one thing that was going to keep me towards the 5D Mark IV versus getting something like this was the fact that I like to use Canon Log and the 422, although 8-bit, 422 color space of the 5D Mark IV and the excellent dual pixel autofocus. So all of that said, you know what, you're fine with your 5D Mark IV. So then I started watching videos. I didn't want to rush this video out and just jump into it. I didn't go to that press event in Hawaii, so I don't have that type of connections with Canon. But at the very least, I wanted to be able to see what everyone else was saying, look at the actual video released by Canon, and you know, come to a decision on whether or not it's even worth the upgrade or at least selling one of my cameras and actually switching it out for this camera. You know, I watched all of these videos and I put out a video on, basically I was just joking around not too long ago. What would the Canon 5D Mark IV be like if we had a flip screen and in-body image stabilization on how awesome that would be? And what's funny is as I looked and, and did my research, I went from skeptical to excited to like meh. I'm kind of like in the middle. Now let me explain why. 5D Mark IV, which I've got right here on top of my gimbal. Now this is a, uh, and it's not balanced because I had a microphone on it, but I'm now using this microphone for, for recording this video. Now this, with the in-body image stabilization is awesome. The 1.74 times crop on the 4K makes me use an APS-C uh, style lens that fits on EF, it's a Tokina lens, but it, it kind of solves the problem of the crop when it comes to wanting to shoot wide. I don't have an issue with that, with at least for the crop when it comes to doing selfie style. But I wish I did have a, a flip screen so I could see myself as I'm moving around. Although I gotta admit, using a gimbal and then using a flip screen would be a bit challenging. So I don't think I'd be using a flip screen and a gimbal at the same time. However, Enough of that stalling, let's get right to the specs that I care about. Now, this, the, the specs that I care about is video. So I went down and I started seeing what they're actually offering video. And if it's anything new when compared to the 5D Mark IV. So what do you got? You got rid of the MJPEG codec. And now you finally have um, H.264 codec, which means excellent compression and easier to use on computers rather than the MJPEG codec which was really inefficient when it came to video compression. So what you're going to find is all the you have two types of compression for the 4K footage. All I, which is pretty much every frame is captured, and then IPB, which is a compression between frames to just really track what changes and save a lot of memory. So you can do 120 megabits per second 
on the IPB compression and 480 megabits per second on the all eye compression, giving you excellent quality. Now the 5D Mark IV has 500 megabits per second on their MJPEG codec, which is actually similar to an all eye codec, but all eye codec has a better compression and you'd actually get higher quality at a lesser bit rate with the all eye compression. Now the difference that you get actually is the fact that the IPB would be just enough. So the fact that you can get 4K off of a Canon sensor, and now the sensor that they're using is pretty much the same sensor as the 5D Mark IV. Now off of that sensor, you're getting a good compression and pretty much IPB at 120 megabits per second should look really nice. So I don't think that's too much to complain about. Now with that compression, you also had the 1.7 times crop. Now that is disappointing. You know, Nikon released their mirrorless camera full frame 4K. Anyone who has a full frame mirrorless camera in the modern day has full frame 4K and Canon still has the crop. Why do they have the crop? Because they're still using the 5D Mark IV sensor. And it's got its pros and its cons, of course. You can use actually lenses and get a better zoom, but then the con is you have gotta have a very wide lens. But to combat that, you can adapt an EFS lens into the R mount for this type of camera and actually use a crop sensor lens, like an APS-C lens, to this camera so that you can actually get a wider field of view, like what I'm doing with the 5D Mark IV right now. So that's a plus that you gotta do that, but the fact that you need a workaround is unfortunately disappointing when they should actually be introducing cameras with full frame 4K, but perhaps they wanna do that at a higher price point. This camera is meant to compete with the A7 III, in my opinion but, and a new Nikon Z6. Now, another thing that had me excited, like I said, the 5D Mark IV, the reason why I wanna keep it is because it's got the 8-bit 422 and C-Log. I got excited when I was watching a video from Tony Northrup and it showed not only 8-bit, but 10-bit C-Log. So 10-bit recording into the camera, I was like, wow, that has got to be amazing. But then, I find out, of course, because I take time and I look things up, that it's 10-bit 422 external only. Now that's a huge improvement compared to the 5D Mark IV that only had 1080p out at 422, I believe, 8-bit 422. We've got 10-bit 422 4K out of the HDMI port. Great, you should have done that a long time ago with the 5D Mark IV because you could have done it, but fine, we've got it now for a lot less money. But then the internal codec, which a lot of times, I'm not gonna be carrying an external recorder because that's a heavy rig to start carrying for certain types of shoots. And for that, I bought and pre-ordered the Blackmagic Cinema 4K camera or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I pre-ordered that camera so that I can have raw recording on the go. So for Canon, at least to give me as much information internally is what I was hoping for. And what are they giving us? 8-bit 420 off of a cropped 4K. That disappointed me to the point where I'm like, yeah, it's not worth replacing the 5D Mark IV. I'm sorry, it's, it's just not. It's from a, I know it's not all about specs, but it's usability and it's got a bunch of new features like this little touch bar that they added onto it and it's easy to use and it's got silent shooting, but I'm a videographer, not so much a photographer. And on the video specs, it's subpar when it comes to the likes of, I'm sorry, Sony a7 III has got it all, but I'm a fan of Canon's color science and I'm a fan of the dual pixel autofocus, but Sony's killing it right now. And they're several generations ahead, so of course they would be killing it, but I was hoping to hold out for Canon. Now, I might still be looking at this camera, though it's it depends, but the only way I would actually upgrade to the EOS R is if I sell my Canon 6D, which is obviously ancient compared to uh, most modern day cameras. So it would still be a, a nice upgrade. But, and, and the reason I would upgrade to Canon specifically rather than the Sony is because I already have so much Canon glass. 
and I do enjoy the 5D Mark IV. Recording off my 5D Mark IV is, is amazing. I can still jump to Sony. I'm just waiting for the next big thing. Sony, I would have jumped to Sony if it wasn't for the fact that I want something more than 4K30. I want 4K60. If I get 4K60, whether it have been Panasonic with the rumors of them coming out with a full frame camera, whether it had been uh, Nikon, with 4K60, hopefully better autofocus. I'm looking for 4K60 from a full frame camera. And right now, the only thing that really has it and from a full frame perspective, and it doesn't even give you the full frame, is the 1DX Mark II. And that's just way too expensive and the codec is inefficient. Now let's talk about the memory card. Now, when it comes to photographers, having that redundancy of two memory cards is highly important. And me in particular, I, agree but then it's also a little bit different for me because i do mostly video and to have that redundancy as video is rare in a camera so i won't judge it for that canon might have a few more releases coming up so i do want to hold off to see what's coming next because final thought is that i believe before you upgrade you actually get what you're looking for we're pretty much used to not getting the camera that has it all but at least buy the camera that you're looking for. I have several cameras from several different brands because I'm looking for a specific thing and I'm not getting it off of Canon, so I got it off of Panasonic. I wasn't getting it off of Panasonic, so I got it from an old camera in Samsung. And with this current body, there was one thing that I was missing, and that's raw recording. So I bought a black magic pocket cinema 4k camera. Hopefully I'll get it soon. I just get what I'm missing. And my final point is that the EOS R is a full frame camera from Canon that gives you dual pixel autofocus and it gives you a flip screen. I'm not looking for any of that. So that's why my decision is I'm holding off, but I do want to check out the reviews and see what people have to say, but I'm not, I don't need a vlogging camera right now. I've got enough of that. So. And I love vlogging, not only with the NX1, which is recording me right now, but with the Canon 5D Mark IV, which I really don't have an issue vlogging in 4K. It gives me more color information internally than this new camera. But it's a much cheaper camera, so to be expected. But what do you guys think? Are you guys excited about this mirrorless lineup? I think it's still exciting, and if you're jumping in, it's not a bad camera. It's not the best camera. But it's not a bad camera, but if it gives you what you want, which is that color signs and that dual pixel autofocus, you might just be happy. As always, let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.